Hello my friends, Mr Max Bliss on the southwest of France on the 31st of May 2015 with a shocking, shocking geoengineering covert weather and climate modification program in progress. I've seen electromagnetic frequencies affecting the clouds or the material, the aerosols that are up there in the atmosphere. It was cold when I came out for a walk and the sun behind these contrails or artificial clouds is now intensely burning. So I don't know if this is a photophoretic effect on the nanoparticles that have been sprayed into the atmosphere, directing the energy of the sun to the earth, intensifying it, as was written about by Edward Teller et al. in his 1997 paper, suggesting putting metallic nanoparticles into the atmosphere that could be aligned to either warm or cool the planet. I don't know if this is a side effect of the ozone being depleted by the various different particles that have been talked about spraying into the atmosphere for solar radiation management because all of them have the effect of depleting the ozone and when the ozone is depleted the harmful UV radiation from the sun burns the surface of the planet heating it up but I have felt now there is an intense burning which is remarkable because um, it was very cold earlier on and now it is heating up and look at these rain clouds that are building up not all the contrails are the same my friends some of them are feathering out like the uh, mare's tails of the uh, contrail cirrus and other contrails are behaving in different ways, which is remarkable really, considering we're being asked to believe it's just a normal phenomena of planes flying through very moist, cold atmosphere. With a relative humidity in the atmosphere above 60 to 70%. That's what we're being asked to believe. Rare succinct, discrete conditions necessary for a contrail to form. But we see this on a regular basis, if not a daily basis. You're being asked to believe that's normal. These skies that you never used to see during the 1980s, you're being asked to believe that's normal. It's just an increase in aircraft. That's all it is, apparently, according to the debunkers and the establishment that want to create a one world government system they call the New World Order. They're using this covert weather and climate modification program to con the masses into believing the hype and the media hype about global warming, anthropogenic global warming. Well, there's been a hundred year long plus serious scientific investigation by the world's leading physicists and scientists into how to modify and control the weather. You had presidents like Eisenhower, JFK, Nixon, Ford, all Johnson, all talking that weather control is the highest priority. The JFK announced to the United Nations Assembly on the 25th of September 1961 that all nations will work together to accurately predict and one day control the weather. Well, a lot's changed since then. And uh, it looks like we're a long way down the road. It looks like they certainly can, but they don't tell everyone about this because it's part of an agenda, you see. Because they want this new world order. They want a slave system. A very tight matrix using scientific technology to create the infrastructure necessary for total monitoring, total control, the dumbing down of humanity, the altering 
physiologically of humanity using nanotechnology, using biosciences, the GMO food we're being swamped with, it just won't go away, even though nobody wants GMO foods. But of course, our covert weather and climate modification program, which definitely has been running since the 50s, can create droughts, floods, storms, all kinds of extreme weather events that can harm crops, can cause nations great problems to bring them into line with the New World Order agenda for the 21st century. So you could see the motive for the powers that shouldn't be, those that start all the wars and create economic woes for various nations all around the world until they come into line with the agenda, until they realise they have no choice but to capitulate and acquiesce to this horrific criminal elite running this world through the banking system, the corporations and controlling science for the Royal Society filtering technology for controlling humanity and altering the way we live because they're cultural engineers as well as social engineers as well as geoengineers and they are able to control the weather and have been for quite some time just have a look at the effect of dry ice co2 from the General Electric programs back in the 40s. Operation Cumulus, not just CO2, a very small amount of this dry ice can create clouds, can create rain over a vast region. In fact, Edward Teller wrote about this in the 50s, saying that we now know that we will be able to control the weather but there will be problems because if you alter the weather in one region, by proxy, you will affect the weather in another region. You're affecting the balance. You're changing what should be going on. So they've known about the problems of a wide-scale weather modification program. In the 60s, there were farmers that successfully sued companies or even the government that were involved in the US with weather modification because they lost crops. So they've always known there would be problems. In 1952 in the UK, the RAF, working together with the Met Office and international scientists through Operation Cumulus, because it wasn't just in America, they killed 35 people and created a disastrous storm that wiped out a small town called Linmouth. But of course that was denied for 50 years. So they know there are hazards. So it's secret. And they use this to create the extreme weather events that are used by the media to hype up that we may have a climate change problem. And of course, what we've really got is a massive conspiracy of the world's richest people, the oligarchy, creating a system of control so they can dominate all life on this planet and remain at the top of the pyramid of power. This is their goal to create a system where they will never be challenged, where they can do what they want with us, where they can physiologically change us, alter us, make us subservient, make us slaves. We're already slaves, free range slaves. All working harder than we've ever worked before just to pay the bills. The bills sometimes we're paying for natural resources like water that once belonged to the people but have been privatised now. Oh yeah, they've all been privatised because all the different leaders, different nations under instructions from the Bilderberg Group decided we need control of all the resources and then they invented programmes like the United Nations Agenda 21 
to steal the resources and put them under control of one group, the United Nations, will be used as the framework for one world government. For tyranny. They can bring out any laws that might challenge the way you want to live, like growing food in your front garden or drawing water from your own well. Being forced to have an RFID implant might challenge some people and they'll say, over my dead body. But with a one world government system, you won't have the tools to dissent anymore. With an electronic money system, living with a cashless society, you won't be able to protest anymore. It will be so easy to neutralise any dissent to this tyrannical one world government system by simply limiting your use of your electric money. RFID chips already in your contactless cards. Already in your bank cards. They're doing it. The infrastructure's been put in place. We've got a limited time to wake up and stop this, and we can. Take care, my friends. Bye for now.